youtube.com slash mayhew mayhem that's youtube.com slash m-a-y-h-e-w m-a-y-h-e-m Hello and welcome to another episode of 30 Minutes of Man. I am your host, my name is Michael Mayhew, and I am here with my co-hosts. What's up everybody, it's me, Greg, and we are joined by the man who does cat yoga in the nude in the hopes that they will swat at his dick. Nick from YouTube.com slash the Tic Tac Man, and accompanying us is my bestest, best, second best intern, Emmanuel. Hello. And as I said, welcome to 30 Minutes of Mayhem, the podcast your mother can be ashamed of, and tell me, Nick, why is this the podcast your mother can be ashamed of? Because I refuse to turn the AC on even though it is 90 degrees. That is exactly correct. And joining us for the first time on, on this run, well, for the first time in a long time with this specific person, it's been, I believe, episode 19 was the last time this person was on. Wait. Not to get your hopes up, it's not Ryan. How's it going? <laughs> it is Larry, hey. Larry, also known as Freakout5000. Nice to have you back, Larry. Thanks for having me. Larry has a channel on YouTube, just in case you haven't listened to us for a long time. He has a channel on YouTube of Freakout5000. Actually, has more than one, but that's neither here nor there. But Freakout5000, it's spelled with two E's. F R E E K O U T 5000. Freakout5000 on YouTube, and he primarily does video game stuff on there so we wanted to make sure that we had you on for this particular episode because we're going to talk about a lot of video game related things but before we do get to that so back in episode 82 we told listeners that if they wanted to send greg their old magazine porn to email and so on and so forth last time we talked about this was in episode 89 to where we were no longer accepting porn for this because greg was way overwhelmed at that point so here we are now in episode 96 a little removed from that and at this point greg you have received every bit of pornography magazines from listeners and everyone else and whatnot at this point how many total did you end up with it was about uh 73 about 73 magazines that you ended up with total now we did talk about on 89 that you're using them as your box springs are you currently doing that still and have these magazines helped you put that fleshlight that love of your life to more use uh yes okay. very much so so thank you very much everybody for uh the magazine for, experience yes for the magazine experience i am now 100 percent learned in the ways of the magazine experience and next we move on to vhs tapes email us 30 minutes <laughs> at gmail.com and and we will get greg a vcr and some vhs tapes <laughs> And we will show no mercy this time. So if you want to be Greg's own personal magazine or his own personal fleshlight and you would like to punch Greg's tweet card, email us 30 minutes mayhem at gmail.com. We are still casting. We are still accepting applications for our game show about wanting to, you know, punch Greg's speed card. However it may be, could end up with just a gift card if you don't really want to touch Greg's PP. Let us know, 30 minutes mayhem at gmail.com, uh, hashtag take Greg's speed card. Now, Larry at this point is completely fucking confused and has no idea what the fuck is going on, and that is perfectly fine, because before we actually get into what you're even here for, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Overcome by crippling debt. But that private college had the best sociology program. Our casters find themselves in an existential crisis. What the hell am I doing with my life? They seek donations through PayPal at 30 minutes of mayhem at gmail.com. Who's this Iris? And why is he taking my money? And Nick fights the IRS. Next time on 30 Minutes of Mayhem, the quest for more money. Prepare to be audited. Ah! So our first topic for this episode is going to be what is the worst video game that you personally have ever played? I have one, but it's a gimme. It's Seke no no Ronde, which is like this shitty-ass Japanese fighting game. But I'm going to go with uh, something a little bit more. I played this for like 15 minutes and thought this was trash. Like the original Gears of War. Really? Fuck that game. It was ugly and uninteresting. I'd never got in the whole Gears thing, so I never really understood it. It just looked like this cumbersome characters that, like... I, I don't know. I, I just never could get into it. And I, I have friends that, like, just beat their fucking me to that game. And, like, got Gears tattoos and shit. And I'm like, I don't understand. It's slow and boring. The only one I've ever played was the second one. 
The second one was pretty fun. Then... Was the second one with the horde mode? Yeah, yeah. that shit was fun. Yeah. yeah, I played that horde mode one night. That was actually enjoyable. But the original, oh my god, how do you... I... They're like, oh, but the story, and I start playing, and I just like, these characters aren't compelling. Why do I care? No. It's like the only thing good about that game was like horde mode. Fucking, you play online, everybody had that little sawn-off shotgun. It was so good yeah. that oh, Halo god. had to try and copy it to remain relevant. Uh... Well, that actually leads me into uh, what I was going to say my worst game was, but I felt it might be a little controversial for some fucking halo wars was oh do you mean the, the, the rts yeah because oh, i came from playing i literally as a child put like thousand more hours in starcraft and i played a shit ton of rts's that was my thing and i was like oh my god i fucking love halo and i love rts's this is like my dream baby and that baby should have been aborted because I played it uh, almost similar uh, to Nick. I played it for like maybe 30 minutes. I tried the skirmish and I tried the campaign. Gave both a little fair shot. And then I was like, you know what? I hate this. And I returned it that same day. Damn. Yeah. If we want to talk about like first person shooters and whatnot, I would have to say that like worst first person shooter that I played of like a major series. Because there was some trash ass ones like Mag was highly disappointing. Don't you take mine. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Black like Black, Black Ops One is what I'm gonna go with because mm, uh, it was they, so, their servers were trash garbage. It, you followed up the biggest game of that series, like Modern Warfare Two, is what put COD on the map. Like yeah, people want to credit COD Four or whatever. Like yeah, that got people's attention. World at War followed it up for some people, but Modern Warfare Two was the one that put COD on the map. It was what solidified its position, like. <clears throat> COD yeah. 4 was COD 4 was what got it out there but then what made it stick was COD 2 COD Modern Warfare 2 like the game that followed that this is the biggest game like everyone you fucking know is playing this game. I didn't have a problem really with that game till towards like the end of the life cycle. Well, yeah, yeah like, I I have heard that from people but yeah, so Black Ops 1 drops their servers are fucking trash, and and I was super fucking excited for it because of how much I loved Modern Warfare 2. And then they're like, we're going to Vietnam, and I was like, oh my god, I've been saying for how long that they need to have a fucking Vietnam game because, like, I know Battlefield, everyone gets a hard-on about that, had a Vietnam game. But, like, we haven't ha had, like, a, a first-person shooter, like, on-console, like, solid-ass Vietnam game. Everyone wants to keep redoing World War II. It's been done. Everyone's doing modern for a while. Let's go back to one of the most controversial wars in American history. Let's do that. And they're like, that's what we're doing. And I'm like, yes. And then you're in Vietnam for like 0.2 seconds. And then it's doing some like futuristic shit and some other shit. And then their servers are trash online. The gameplay is trash. The fucking hit. In Vietnam, we have red dot sites for some reason. And the, fucking, <laughs> the hit detection on that game was absolute ass. And I was like, that that was the the beginning of the end of COD for me. And then Modern Warfare 3 restored my faith. And then I got tricked into buying Black Ops 2 because of zombies. And then I quit after that point all the way up until World War 2. Actually, no, I bought Infinity War because I wanted the re... Or whatever, is it, was it called? Infinite War? What the hell was that one? Yeah, so that's what, that's what it was for me. But like, if I go with other other stuff, I really, really hated... Uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. I thought that game was absolute garbage. Oh, uh, you know what? Fucking the original Assassin's Creed. I played that for about 20 minutes and put it on a fucking shelf. Well, did you play it? Yeah. Did you play it back in its actual lifespan, though, or did you go back to it after playing a different Assassin's Creed? I'm actually pretty good at parsing what is going to be a good game or not a good game. So I haven't played a ton of bad games, but that's probably why the few bad games I have played stick way out in my mind. And one I'm going for... My taste is so sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Just, you, just you, did, you did sound like a total cock. You okay, were... well, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I was just trying to say, like, it's... You're like, I don't bother with games that won't be good because I know every <laughs> single game that will be good and those who won't, and I am well, never I, wrong. I used to, like, really obsessively read video game magazines, so I always knew, like, which so games like, were based the ones on that some, were Based on someone else's opinion. Essentially, yeah, but a lot of the time it was, you know, just from, like, looking at it or playing, like, uh, a little bit of it at, like, it, like, renting it and then playing a little bit of it. But um, there's very few games that I 
really, truly hated. One that sticks out the most in my mind, the reason why I'm picking this was because it was one that I really, really wanted to play. And then when I finally got to play it, it was such a massive disappointment. And I was like a kid when this happened. So, and, and this is going to be a long title. Um, my... Now, was this before, game I, before you discovered porn in 2003? Yes. Okay, so literally was, the only masturbatory aids that you had at that point in time were <laughs> video games. So when this was a yeah, disappointment, pretty, it was more. Yeah, more, pretty more. much. You're it like, was. Oh, I'm, I can't even hump the pillow until I fucking climax tonight <laughs> because this video game is so bad and I was planning on beating this shit yeah. for months on this shit. It was um, Gundam Side Story 0079 Rise from the Ashes. Like, I got it for the Dreamcast. That sounds like trash. The only reason know. that you would get a Gundam game is to look at the fucking titties. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, when, back in 2000, when I was, like, watching Toonami and everything, I fucking loved Gundam Wing, and I, I still love the Gundam franchise. So, I was super excited because I saw a game based in the Gundam uh, universe, and I was like, oh, I, I want it so bad, and my brother Adam finally got it for me for my 12th birthday in 2001, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Put it in uh, the Dreamcast, started up, and five minutes into the first mission, I'm like, this is a load of horse shit. It was, like, every single thing about it was terrible the graphics even by those day standards were subpar at best it controlled like a fucking train wreck it was like one of the worst controlling games i've ever played you can o you only had a cockpit view and oh my god it was such a mess like i hated that game i can't think of any other time where i was so massively disappointed in something that it was like actually kind of heartbreaking for me like i actually legitimately felt sad because it kind of makes you something. think has your parents ever thought that about you <laughs> <laughs> oh every day man every day which do you think is more disappointing this games or your your parents views on where your life is progressing oh probably my parents views but i mean that's neither here nor there we're talking about video games He's and, like, look, I use video games to escape the shit reality yeah. that is my life, but bringing me back <laughs> Pretty to much. it. Nick, if you could embody his father right now, how do you feel about that question to Greg? Is it a bigger disappointment for this video game, or is it a bigger disappointment of where Greg's life is heading? You know what? If I was Greg's dad, I'd just be like, if that's the most disappointing thing in his life, I did a pretty damn good job. I'm kind of <laughs> proud of myself and slightly disappointed at the same time. But you knew that you did the best you could. I did everything I could. He's the one who failed me, not me. <laughs> I feel that that's, uh, that's a pretty solid answer. What was it about the new uh, Medal of Honor game that you hated? The online multiplayer, and if you try to play mm. through campaign, it's like playing a Battlefield game. Which is... Because it was uh, all done by... Well, yeah. it was done in the same engine, not by the same devs. Some of the same devs, though. That was that was a gigantic disappointment. Um, there was one mission on there... Um, well, the campaign was trash because it was just like, here's a thing, here's a thing, here's another thing. Here's Shoot another everything thing. Really enjoyed and that hope campaign. you don't die by that thing. Yeah. yeah, and there was nothing to it, and I don't, I didn't really, I didn't really dig that. But there was one mission on there to where you had to like hold off the horde of people coming while you're. Yes. Like, that that mission was really crazy because they they're coming from one direction, and then all of a sudden they're coming from another direction, and then the like in the final waves they're coming from all four directions. You're like, oh, what the fuck, what the fuck? Like playing on hard. That's what made that game for me. Yeah, like that one mission, and there was, and there was like they did really well with the sound. Because I know, I think it might have been the beginning of that same mission where you like empty into that valley out of the the Chinook, you empty into that valley or whatever, and when you're getting shot at, it sounds pretty realistic for how it sounds. And that, not that I've ever been, you know, shot at or been shooting a rifle in a desert fucking valley or anything, but the sounds you do hear um, from different videos and whatnot from real life shit, it, it was very accurate in that same sound. And that I did enjoy about it, but. Um, other than that, I would I would agree that that game is a gigantic disappointment. With all of that being said, let's take a quick commercial break. Hi, Greg here. Feel like you're not getting enough pussy on your dick? Dick feeling a little dry? Balls not getting bounced on enough? I got the solution right here. A 30 minutes of mayhem shirt and it's guaranteed to get you laid. Don't believe me? Just listen to these satisfied customers. Ever since I started wearing my 30 Minutes of Mayhem shirt, I get pussy five times a day now. Thanks, Mom, for buying me the shirt. 
God down there, God down there, I get my shirt off, Porky Pig and that son of a bitch. I'll tell you what, I'm only wearing that shirt when I'm fucking a bitch in the ass. Goddamn animals. Do animals count? Is that part of this thing? What if I'm fucking my cousin? If I'm fucking my cousin, does that count too? What about homosexuality? Is there any specific thing that we are disregarding when it comes to whether these shirts will get me laid or whether they will not get me laid? Now, I'll tell you what, well, fuck it. If I'm Porky Pig and goddamn shit, these fucking things work. Are you ready to roll around in a wheelchair the rest of your life because your pelvis got pulverized by pounding so much pussy? Then roll on over to MayhemMayhem.Spreadshirt.com and get laid today! Warning, 30 minutes man cannot guarantee wearing this shirt will get you laid. Results may vary. This is Nostalgia Bomb! Hello everybody and welcome back to another exciting episode of Nostalgia Bomb. Today we're recording episode 96, which means that today we will be talking about one of the biggest things that happened in 1996, the release of the Sony PlayStation and the Nintendo 64, arguably two of the biggest console releases in our lives. These later, of course, gave way to many other uh, many other consoles, but we're just going to focus on these. So, gentlemen, let's get to it. What are our thoughts on the PlayStation 1 and the Nintendo 64? So, I remember... Let me help you guys out real quick. Okay. All right? Just pretend we're in court. All right? Okay. The Nintendo 64 and the PS1. Okay. Which one had the like, most memorable games on it? PlayStation 1. Because it's like they competed against each other, and you got to think, like... Well, for someone who didn't have PlayStation... Oh, here we go. I don't have a lot, unfortunately. But I know it had an impact on a lot of people. I mean, growing up in Mexico, there wasn't really... Because <laughs> oh, it's like 64 had like GoldenEye, uh, Pokemon Stadium, fucking... Um, Mario Kart. The Zelda games. Mario uh, Kart. Well, the, prob- the problem with the Nintendo 64 was that was when Nintendo, unfortunately, they did not produce a lot. And because they weren't accepting games from other third-party developers, they ended up not getting a lot whereas the playstation one got shit tons of games from different developers so they ended up having more memorable games in the long run so i mean that's what even though i mean i never owned a playstation one myself i only played on my older brother adams i still would pick the playstation one over the n64 because there were more games that came out for the playstation one that i remember off the top of my head i mean i played on both of them but i i played on the nintendo 64 more so i have more experience with the n64 but i just you know in the long run i feel like the playstation one had a bigger impact than the nintendo 64 did for like, me like i own both from the begin, like from the start like i got them both at the same time and i went through and just gotta have my little tasting and it wasn't that um like those nintendo titles like really stuck with you it's just that the ps1 not only did it just have like all the good shit you remember, like there's a bunch of like they started importing a bunch of niche games, and I yes. even had an adapter kit where you could play Japanese games on mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that like the sky was the limit with that thing. I want to go back kind of to the beginning of it here. I remember as they were both about to come out, or maybe they had both like they, they either come out or they're about to. I can't remember. It's been so long, but like my friend group at the time, this is like a year or so before. I met Larry, but my friend group at the time were like, "All right, everybody's gonna get the same, like the same system." And we're like, "All right." And then we like went back and forth. We talked about it or whatever. And then we decided Nintendo 64. My one friend, he's the first one to get it because they got more money, so he gets a he gets a Nintendo 64. So we're like playing it there or whatever. And then two other of my friends get the PlayStation One, and we're like, "Well, what the hell?" Like we all decided on the N64. Well, I I hadn't got anything yet, so. I like hung out with them a little bit more than what I did to the the guy that the, the N64. So I ended up also getting the PlayStation. In the end, I made I made the the obvious correct choice there. But I later did end up getting an N64. But I think it was like maybe like two years after, maybe three years after that. Because I know the one I got it was like a special edition one that like Larry said come with uh, like the WrestleMania 2000. So whatever year mm-hmm. that Re- WrestleMania 2000 came out, which I'm assuming is probably 99, it came with Star Wars, the pod racing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Star Wars Episode One Racer, yes. Basically, if those two friends hadn't betrayed the rest of the group, then it would have never really set me down on the path that I ended up on as far as video games go, because on the PlayStation 1, I was introduced to 
the Metal Gear Solid series, well, it wasn't a series yet at the time, but the first Metal Gear Solid game, which is now my favorite series of all time. And I've oh, God, yeah, Metal and, Gear. And I've continued Fuck. to get, like, to continue along with the PlayStation. I got the PS2, 3, 4, and I've followed this series all along, and, like, Assassin's Creed is probably, like, my second favorite series of all time. And without, like, that happening, I, I would have never got to that. But, like... Another thing that always, that really hit it for me was the graphics. Now, if you look at the graphics of the PS One, it, it makes you can't even watch it; makes you motion sick. No, but no, yeah, they they did <laughs> not age well. But then again, neither did the N sixty four. So even that's what I was gonna say is they didn't age well now. But even back at that time, the PlayStation One graphics were like a step forward in like progress. But the N sixty four graphics felt like they were still. Like, the yeah. GameCube should have came out the time the PS1 did. Yeah. Yeah, like, mm. it, it felt like... Well, that was what made the GameCube so disappointing to me. I luckily never bought it, but was because the GameCube graphics were essentially N64 graphics. Like, no, they weren't. They were way better than the N64's graphics. Yeah, well, I, I, would, I would disagree. But... Comparatively? Really? No, really no, like, I mean, like a watered-down, like, my... PS1. Yeah. Compa okay, because... Comparatively, cause, like... you didn't let me finish. Okay. Comparatively to what else was happening at that time, it was basically the equivalent to N64 graphics. Eh, I'd have to disagree. Like, I think the ga the GameCube had like graphics that were as good as some of the games on the uh, Xbox and PlayStation 2. But I mean, that's just. I mean, the water. Oh what, my god, the what, water what, graphics what, in Super what? Mario Sunshine still blow me away. What? Yeah, like, what, there what was the hell really games were you bad. playing on the PS2 that the is that the fucking uh, GameCube graphics were comparable? What the hell games were you playing that they looked <laughs> worse? I mean, like, I honestly found no difference between the two. I thought they both. I thought they both had really good looking games on them. You're saying, yeah. as a general sense, you would hold up the GameCube graphics to the PS2 or the Xbox. You're saying that yes, it's on I the would. same level, graphics-wise. I would, yes. You're fucking insane. I agree with you, Mike. Beautiful-ass games. You're insane. On the, they're, like, I, I would I agree care. if you said PS1, but definitely not PS2. Yeah, I, I want to say that they're like they, they're the same, but but I'd say that they look like fucking N64 polygraph shit. When there was Melee, you had Wind Waker. Wind Waker still holds up. The yeah, graphics from that original game still hold up. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh my god. Wind Waker, that game is fucking gorgeous. It's the Nintendo Syndrome again, though, because that once again, they're very Same Japanese like company. Fantasy. And they're like, well, I say that, and then their competitor is also Japanese, but the point is is that they're very stubborn. Those games that were super stylized, uh, they had a lot of super stylized games. And that, that's one they, of the reasons they had the game. And those were all, yeah, and those were all Nintendo games, too. Or a lot of them, because they know how to like play with what their weaknesses and strengths. Oh, God. I mean, some of my all-time favorite video games came from the GameCube. So I mean, I I'm a that's why I'm a little defensive about the GameCube because it was like one does of my all-time favorite video game systems. Th but does that does that make you biased and and like to the point to where you can't like accept reality? That no, because the PS2 is one of my all-time favorite video game systems too. I played the shit out of both of those systems. They were big parts of my like late childhood, early teenage years, dude. So I I, I just feel like anyone I, I don't know I I don't see how anyone could say that like that's on the same level. It's a couple steps down. Well, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree because I'm not changing my position. That, that's fine. You can be as stubborn as you want, just like them, and not update their yeah. shit. Be like on the same way as everybody else. That's fine. It all makes fucking sense. Now. I mean, their stuff is updated now. I mean, holy shit, they have like HD graphics you could take with you wherever you want with the Switch now. But I mean, well, like look at it. They had to because games. they released a Wii and then a second Wii. Yeah, basically. <laughs> And, like I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I loved the Wii U, but it it basically was just the Wii without the motion controls. So you would argue then that the Wii was on the same level as the PS3 and Xbox 360? No, no, the Wii was definitely a step backwards for them, in my opinion. The GameCube was PS1 and the Wii was PS2. Yeah, that's essentially it. They were one, they were one step behind what everybody else was doing, at the very well, least. They always have been. That's kind of their thing. It's a strength and a weakness, because like, they still like make games. But to get back to what we're actually talking about, because it kind of devolved there, I feel, I feel like the N64 was 
actual closer competitor to the PlayStation 1 than the uh, than the uh, GameCube was to the Xbox or the PlayStation 2. All I'm going to say is is that uh, I'm going to defend a Nintendo to the day I die because I just I grew up on a lot of Nintendo systems. I mean, I make sure to own all the video game systems that I can because I don't like to choose one over the other because everyone has like good games for it. And there are some consoles where I prefer the version of that game over the other. But I, I just I hate it when people today like shit on Nintendo for like the most absolutely stupid reasons so i'm gonna so i'm gonna be one of those guys who's like just gonna be very defensive if you ever like talk shit about anything related to nintendo because it's very near and dear to me you're you're basically doing exactly what you're saying that they're doing don't get me wrong i grew up on nintendo as well and then i i got a sega and then i went from sega to a playstation and then i got a, a an n64 so i grew oh. up on it as well and i and a lot of those games hold special places in my heart but when it comes to the point of reality like going back to my story of what i was saying about how those two friends like betrayed the group and it literally felt that way that they like betrayed us by getting a playstation the facts of the matter is that the playstation was a far superior system and i will say that had to, remember had to, when you did something similar to me whenever i said i got my 360 yeah i felt like you betrayed the entire friend group and i was like i'll never touch that system but yeah and i never did buy it and i never have and never will but yeah felt like casting him out to sea because he betrayed everybody but uh, the facts of the matter is, like, the PlayStation, like, was a far superior system to it. Like, it was competitive, but I just felt it was a far superior system, and you, you just have to accept that. And the day that is never gonna come, but if the day ever did come to where Microsoft put out a system that was superior to Sony, I would admit that. The day's never gonna happen, but what I'm saying is, like, if it ever did which it won't, you just have to eventually accept that harsh reality. And the facts of the matter is, that's exactly what happened with the GameCube. They weren't on that level. Did they have great games? Absolutely. But they weren't there. They weren't a true competitor. And that shows following past that point, I think. I think they've always been playing from a step behind, starting with the N64. See, I would say they were behind with the N64, but then they like caught up with the GameCube. But we already went over that, and I don't want to have as much firepower the, as the N64 did. We it already has... went over all that. I don't want to go. I'm just over saying, all that exclusives again. wise. Mm, okay, maybe you do have a point. I don't know. But when it comes to the one we were talking about before, the original PlayStation and the uh, the Nintendo 64, I will say the original PlayStation was better. It was crazy to me because I, I felt like a pretty debatable thing, like N64 versus PlayStation 1. Like, I could see valid points on either side, and I've, I'm used to dealing with people that go one way or the other on that. And, like, most people ended up actually owning both because back in the day that was actually a lot more possible than what, like, consoles are nowadays. Yeah, because they're so expensive anymore. Right, so I thought it was going to be, like, this good, like healthy back and forth debate and i was like well if we went forward with the debate you can't compare the gamecube to the ps2 or the xbox so that's not a healthy debate because it's just not comparable you at that point you would have to step to like xbox versus playstation because that was more competition and then like going farther even forward like what did nintendo has fallen so far off of even being considered competition between the two and then like you move forward again from that it's the same thing so I felt like this was like Nintendo's last stand of actually having a legitimate argument. And then this topic ended up really being about how some way Greg feels Nintendo that, versus Sony that <laughs> that it, it, that the GameCube is on on that same level. So it just it didn't even go where it was supposed to go, which which is which is totally fine, but my ultimate vote is for uh, the PS1. So yeah, I will say my ultimate vote is for the PS1 as well. And since it gave me Final Fantasy 7 and 9, uh, yeah. my ultimate vote goes to the PS1. All things considered, it's PlayStation 1. Everyone did vote for the PlayStation 1 on the actual topic of PlayStation yeah. 1. Uh, in it's unanimous. You now it's up to you, the listener. Do you agree with any of our opinions? Write it all down below in the comments section. With that being said, that does it for another episode of 30 Minutes of Mayhem. I have been your host. My name is Michael Mayhew, and I have been here with my co-hosts. Greg. And Nick. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, all those different locations, and Spotify. And you can donate to us on PayPal using 30 Minutes of Mayhem at gmail.com. I really hope you have enjoyed this episode and uh, later, fellas. <laughs>